I'm very glad to have this opportunity to speak here. And uh, as you will see later, uh, the title of my talk is very much related to this uh, workshop in the next slide. But before that, let me just uh, mention that uh, I will talk about cells similar, discretely cells similar, and uh, their rotative versions. So these are special solutions of Navier-Stokes equations. So the connection to this workshop is that this name was learned from this workshop. So this name did not exist before for Navier-Stokes community before I attended this uh, uh, workshop in 2009. So that's the connection with this workshop. I was very happy to, to find the name finally. <coughs> and th that talk is, uh, is, about, uh, is in cosmology, which I will explain later. Uh, so these are my two collaborators. Uh, Mikhail Kolopkov, he's a young guy in Russia, based on Novosibirsk. He's an expert in real analysis. And, and Zach Bresha, he's a postdoc at UBC. So he has several joint work with me. Oh, I can just uh, outline. So first, I will give an introduction. <coughs> so I will give three constructions for self similar solutions. So the first one um, is all of them are based on a prior bounds, but uh, the proofs are different. So the first construction is, is uh, based on herd estimate near initial time for local array solutions. So that was first done by GR and Spheric for self-similar solutions. And then for myself, uh, for, for DSS solutions. And this, this construction works only in R3. The uh, same construction works only in half space. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, the prior bound is proved based on method of contradiction and reduction to a real field theorem for all our equations. So this is a classical method uh, invented by Leroy. And so it's a joint work of uh, Kolobokov and myself. And this, this work only for self similar solutions, not for, not for DSS solutions. And, and the, the third construction uh, is based on a new explicit applied Estimate. So it's a weak solution approach. And it works uh, in every case. So uh, self similar and discrete self similar and also uh, high, whole space and half space was done last year. And then we, we, we work out the rotative version uh, this year. <coughs> so, so, uh, my original title did not have uh, this part, but, but CJ was uh, in my audience three months ago in a uh, talk in Harvard. So I decided to give uh, this actual new part to make uh, this uh, more interesting to her. And finally, I will remark on the backward case. So here's the table. So uh, we have three methods that are based on different things. The first method is based on the stock equ equation itself. Uh, the second one and third one are based on the real equations. And uh, so this is a, uh, OK, so, so the, the applied bounds are put in different ways. So the first one is based on regularity criteria. And so the bounds they get, we get the, uh, is uh, a point-wise bounds. The solutions here are strong. The same way is based on contradiction and all the equation. It's H1 bound. And the last way is an explicit cutoff, and it's usual energy bound. OK, so introduction. <coughs> so, so here is the usual non-fixed equations in R3 times uh, positive time with initial data U0 diverge free. So here are the notation. And you, you drop a linear term, we call this a stock system. So it, it has two basic properties. Uh, the first property is the applied bound. 
So, uh, like the la la nonlinear term is uh, anti-symmetric, so you multiply this nonlinear term by two u and integrate, it disappears. Uh, so this is the usual apply bound for Lambert's two equations, and here we don't see the nonlinear term, so it's the same as the Stokes system, and uh, it was based on this apply bound the way uh, constructed solutions in whole whole space R three for any L two data, and Hope did it for for domain case. And now, uh, open questions uh, since Lerouet's work is uh, uniqueness and regularity. And the second property of the equation is the scaling variance. So, if I one solution and for any lambda greater than zero, we can define u superscript lambda to be, this to be given by this formula. Then, this u superscript lambda is also a solution. And uh, related to this uh, property is the Ideal mild solutions. It's a, you, you, you treat a linear term as a source term to a Stokes system and contract solutions by the Picard iteration. And uh, so, uh, so if U0 is in LQ, then that's a unique local in time solution called mild solutions. And for Q equals to 3, this solution would be, would be global if uh, L3 node is small. And so now comes the self-similarity. So if we say it is self-similar if it, uh, u and u lambda are equal for every lambda. So in this case, uh, uh, the value of u is decided by its value at any time moment. And then uh, the discrete version is that uh, u equal to u lambda only for one lambda. It is, uh, this does not need to be for every lambda, but just for one lambda. So in, in this case, uh, the value of uh, u is decided by its value in this uh, time interval, t between 1 and lambda squared. Uh, so maybe let me draw a picture. So for self-similar solutions, the value of u is decided by the value on this time instance. And then the value of u at any later time is decided by a corresponding po point at the earlier time. And then uh, if it's a uh, discrete self-similar, then the value is decided in this uh, time slice. So self-similar object appears uh, in minimal surfaces and gas dynamics. And uh, discrete self-similar object appears in fractals. So a counter set is a discrete self-similar with uh, factor 3. And in cosmology, so here's a quotation from a survey paper. In, in, uh, it says that there's uh, evidence that discrete self-similarity occurs at the mass threshold for the formation of a black hole. So when I look at this mass threshold, I, I think about the work of Burrow and Koenig. So, but anyway, so I learned of this name in the talk here in 2009. And this is also basic. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a, in Schaefer's example, which I will explain later. And so the forward and backward uh, are, di are, disting are distinguished uh, positive time and negative time cases. And when the, it is stationary, uh, we say stationary, it there's no time dependence. So here we take three parameters, uh, we take the parameter A to be one, minus one, and zero correspondingly. So it's different from other equations discussed in this workshop. Uh, uh, the first equation is time irreversible. So forward and backward are different. And so I want to talk about the decay of a typical solution. So if, if it's self-similar, uh, uh, if U0 is self-similar, then it's very simple. U0 will be If U0 is self-similar, 
the u c of x will be equal to its value on uniball divided by its length. So it's minus one homogeneous. And so it has to have at least a decay. And so the natural space for U0 is L3 weak. And the corresponding uh, forward solution will satisfy this uh, point-wise decay. CO first goes to T plus X. So this T could be positive or negative, but uh, here I'm talking about forward solution. And so because of this bound, U is L infinity in time and L3 weak in space. So a, a backward solution satisfying the above bound is called the type one singularity, if, if it's, it is singularity. And so the, the existence is an open question, except the axis symmetric case, so which I did with Bob a few years ago. So I decided to highlight every person which is present in this uh, uh, workshop. So now here is the real equation, and uh, it comes from the similarity transform. So for a equal to plus or minus one, we define the similarity variables. So u x t now change to capital U, or with, with variable y and s. So here a is plus one or minus one, and y is x over root t, and uh, the scale of time s is a log of t. Then this capital U will satisfy the following equation. And this box part is a new term compared to the first equations. So this comes from uh, the time derivative of this guy in this factor and in this factor y. So that's the only thing new. So the behavior of capital U as s goes to positive impurity encodes the behavior of little u uh, at infinity. So that means the time asymptotics when a is positive. And it uh, encodes the behavior near a singular time if a is negative. And uh, there's an important equivalence here. So little u is self-similar if only if capital U is uh, independent of s. And little u is uh, discretely self-similar if only if capital U is uh, periodic in s. A little bit of history. So the stationary equation was uh, written down by the Lui in his uh, 1934 uh, paper. And then, uh, motivated by this problem, Giga and Kong uh, introduced uh, similarity variables and, it, and used that to study nonlinear heat equations. And then it was extended by many people, including uh, Merle and Zog, and also to energy critical wave equations uh, by Koenig and Merle. And so now a little bit about the Schaeffer's example. So Schaeffer in 85 has a paper which is a vector field defined for negative time over Lanfield Stokes uh, equations with a singular force. However, this singular force is uh, speed reducing. So f dot u is a non positive point wise. So na naively speaking, this f should help to make u smooth. But this f u is actually uh, a singular. A sing has a singularity at the, at the origin. So, and his U and little f are both uh, backward discretely self similar. So, f has a different scaling law. So, this was uh, 85. So, that was uh, 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 30 years ago. So, it was there. And so, so now the question about the uh, existent problem for forward self-similar solutions. So for given self-similar initial data, uh, we want to construct a self-similar solution. And, and the natural space here is uh, uh, L infinity in time, and then x should be L3 weak, or some other critical spaces. And for small data, so when C star is small, and then we have this uh, unique, we can use a unique existence theorem for mild solutions. And so this has been done for many authors, uh, including Giga Miyakawa, Kato, Kenon Prenchong, Baraza, and Kok Tataru in different uh, spaces. 
So, so they, 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 so, uh, so the, the, the theory for small data is very satisfactory. So this also includes uh, discrete cell signal solutions and their, and their rotative versions. So now the question is, uh, what, want to construct solutions for large data? Want to put C star large? So when C star is large, we, we don't have an uh, existing theorem for mild solutions. And uh, the usual the real hope weak solutions does not uh, contain such initial data. And so uh, a theory due to the Mahi new set, uh, local related solutions is, uh, is what is useful. But then this, this, this is a weak solution theory, so it has no unique re uh, result. So for given uh, self similar data, we cannot guarantee that the solution itself is self similar. So in 2012, Gia and Spherik uh, constructed self similar solutions for every self similar initial data, uh, even small or large, which is uh, required to be locally heard continuous. So I highlight Gia because he was, his, talk, his work on wave equation was the was a topic of uh, of uh, a clinic. Uh, so why do we care about these guys? Um, so here is a one page note on its reference to the non unicase problem. So we say that the, the unicase problem for the two equations for any L2 H data is an open question. So here is one way to control uh, non-existence, uh, non-uniqueness. So we consider a, a, a self-similar solution W sigma corresponding to initial data sigma times U0. So U0 is fixed, a sigma is a variable. So for sigma small, W sigma is unique. However, for one increase sigma, uh, one, may, one may get bifurcation. And bifurcation has uh, two different types at least. So if bifurcation is of sudden knot type, then we will get two self-similar solutions, W sigma and W sigma prime, with the same initial data. And uh, we could get the whole bifurcation. And then the, the new solutions would be time periodic in the in similarity variables in, the, in, the, in, uh, in the, the real equations. So they correspond to DSS solutions. And so these guys are L3 infinity valued. And the GS first showed that uh, uh, this, this, if we have such solutions, we can, we can prove non uniqueness in the real hope class by cutoff. So that's why they are interesting. But so far, there's no, it's not easy to, con uh, it's not easy to, 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 to prove bifurcation. So this is our introduction. So what should I do? Uh, can I just, uh, no, it, it refuses to, uh, I can I don't believe it. <laughs> okay, this is my part one. So I need to speed up. So it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a, <laughs> it's a first construction using her estimate in near initial time. So uh, the method of GR and the uh, spread is uh, they have a local herd estimate for local array solutions. So it, it's uh, it really done in the in the in the framework of local array solutions. So which you will give estimate. Uh, here and also here. It's only it's a sh short time estimate, but then by self similarity they have estimate below the parabola. And then uh, for the middle for the middle part they just use the guy CFV for stationary solutions. And then from this way, they get a prior estimate. And then they apply the result of the theorem. So this, uh, I skip. And for DSS solutions, the story is a bit uh, 
it's, it's uh, different because uh, in the middle, in this part, I, we don't have, uh, it's not stationary. And so I, I, want, I wanted to have regularity. So I had to require a uh, short time. So it cannot be, it cannot be arbitrary. So, so here's my theorem. I say that if lambda minus one is sufficiently small, which says that this time interval is sufficiently small, respect to the size of data, or if U0 has some symmetry, then we have a regularity theory to guarantee bounds in this middle region. Okay. Uh, the rest is the same, uh, the rest of the theorem. And here it's important to note that the regularity gives us companies, which is uh, essential for the rest of the theorem. And then the second construction, uh, uh, we, we want to work on R3 half space. In half space, we, there is no local array solution theory. The difficulty is that it's very hard to find, a, to, to infer the formula for the pressure from the solution if the, if the solution is not very well localized. And then we, uh, what we do is that we look at the, the Lewis equation directly, and then we want to construct a solution. And then, so here this solution, uh, this equation coupled with the boundary condition, u0 x. u0 x is uh, the time one map of the initial data u0. So the initial data for original little u becomes the boundary data for the, for the Lewis uh, equation. And then u0x uh, is, is, is decay that 1 over x. Uh, our, we, what we expect is that the difference here has, has a beta decay is in L2. And so the theory says that, uh, okay, so A is a Stokes uh, operator in half space. For any self similar, uh, for any self -similar initial data u0, which is C1 local, uh, satisfying the necessary condition. Then there's a, there's a smooth cell similar minor solution in this usual class, L3 infinity uh, uh, valued. And then uh, it, 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 it's a, the, the, the difference between the solution and the, the linear part is uh, decays in L2, like T to one quarter. And our proof actually would work for any call. So we, we, it's, uh, it, the, the proof works for R3 and R3, uh, R3 plus. If you work for any code, you can prove this lemma. This lemma says that uh, uh, for a, a to be the Stokes operator in omega, and U0 is a Taiwan map of initial data, U0. Uh, want U0 to be L6, and its gradient to be L2. Uh, so this is where we use that new data is C1. So L2 is a beta decay than L3 weak. And uh, I don't know any semi-group theory which guarantees a uh, beta decay for the gradient. And so that's why we can only do this in half space, not in, a, uh, not in any other code. So, so this beta decay is essential for our prior estimate. And we, we could do this, uh, we could prove something actually much better using Solnikov's uh, pointwise estimate for green tensors in half space. So here is a sketch. So we we'll look at the equation for the difference. So V, uh, uh, the equation for difference is, uh, is this one. And then uh, the idea is, uh, the idea, has, the, the proof has three steps. So step one is to show that solutions to this equation with the uh, parameter lambda multiplied to the right hand side has a uniform bound. CR, and we prove this by contradiction. I will mention contradiction later. A second step to show that the, in, pre, in the previous step, the constant CR is actually independent of R. And so if we can do these two steps, we, 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 can, we, can, we can apply the rich order theory to get solutions in a, in a, in a high ball R, and then take limits R to infinity to get a solution in R three plus, so that's a, that's the that, that's it's, it's a it's a Lorentz method called invading domains. So the key here is uh, step one two, uh, by basic contradiction. So suppose we don't have uniform bound, we need a solution v k to have a 
H1 bound JK, and look at the, the normalized VK, and they will converge weakly to a solution to the OER equation, V in H1 zero, or in step, step two, H1 in half space and over OER equation, but then with this important uh, inequality, V dot greater than V dot U zero is uh, at least one. And uh, we need to show such solutions does not exist. And this problem is uh, easy when the boundary omega is connected. And it's a difficult question if a boundary omega has uh, at least two components. And so, so the blazer does not work in a DSS setting. Uh, so it does not work in a time periodic case for the real equations because of lack of, com of time, depend uh, com com uh, time companies. So I, I mentioned earlier, for the Rayshaw theory, it's important to have time, uh, time companies. So in our problem here, the limit of VK height in the time periodic case does not satisfy any equation because the time derivative just blows up. And so it's related to this following open problem. So for any domain 2D, 2D is easier, easier than 3D, but this 2D is open. So for any open domain with smooth multi-connected boundary, and then with a periodic boundary data satisfying the necessary condition, do have a periodic solution. <coughs> and so this is an open question. Part three is uh, my third construction. So, uh, so, so, uh, so, so the, the, it's important to know that this is the weak solution theory. And so my data will be quite general. My data is only required to be L3 weak, in, in, uh, not, not heard continuous or C1. So we, 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 we start with uh, DSS initial data U0, which is diversion free, but we don't require symmetry or small lambda minus one. And so we, we don't have regularity, so we can, we can I apply the ratio of the theorem. So what we do is uh, uh, we, want to, we want to study the race system and look for time periodic solutions. So I, I denote U1 uh, to be the corresponding uh, factor field after similarity transform of this linear solution. So this t, the period t is equal to two log lambda. So it's a log of lambda squared. So here's a new observation. So, um, so here's an equation for the difference v, u minus u1. So uh, this is similar to what I wrote in part two with this uh, time derivative here. That's, this is the only thing which is new. So you, 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 you multiply this equation by v and integrate from time zero to time t. So in this, in this way, this term will drop out. So formally, uh, this, 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 this uh, left-hand side equal to this right-hand side. So this is quadratic, and this part is cubic in, U, in V and U1. So uh, here, this term in, in, in this magenta color, V dot greater U1 dot V is usually the trouble term for non field store equations because this term can be very, very large and they cannot be controlled by this term. And there are, there are, there are examples showing that uh, this term is bigger than this term. And uh, what our new observation is that, unlike usual non field store equations, we have this term here. This is only available for the real equation, not for non field store equation. We have this new term. This, this, this new term could help us. And also, this U1 has a decays like 1 over x. So these two combined enable us to control this term. So this is much better than the situation for non-field stokes. So we we'll would replace U1 by a cutoff W. Uh, CR is uh, basically keeps the out outside part for, for large radius U1. And then this correction term to make W divergence free. And this, this uh, Correction term is global, it's not localized. It's, it's, it's convenient uh, this way. Uh, 
So W is diversion free, and uh, its difference with U1 is uh, coming from this part. It's uh, bound, it has a, has, has a, it's declared one y, y to negative two, so that's acceptable. So for LOS3, okay, I, I didn't say that. U0, if it's in LOS3, in this address, if only if U0 is in LOS3 weak. That's a theorem for DSS effective uh, fields. So if U0 in this, is in this, uh, in this uh, space, then we can prove that the LQ of W for any Q bigger than 3 is actually decaying when R goes to infinity. So when we take R large enough, W is small in LQ. So for the difference term, uh, this V dot greater than V dot W term is controlled by this. By, by, and then this term is now small. And then we get, we get a pride bound. So this is a new observation for the Ray equations. So again, this term is important. Without this term, here one can only take L3 uh, weak, not anything else. So here's our theorem last year. So for any uh, divergence free in your data, which is DSS, and uh, in, in L3, B lambda minus B1. So as I said, this is equivalent to that it is in L3 weak in the whole space. Then there's a local Lorentz solution which is also DSS with the same lambda. And uh, the difference between U and uh, the linear, uh, linear part in L2 is decays like T to one quarter. So uh, what is interesting of this solution is that, uh, uh, yes? That sort of condition, that, that replaces like the initial condition, right? You are saying like. That's the initial condition. You know, I mean, when you write this, yes. I mean, you are also saying that u of u at t equals 0 is equal to u0, right? Uh, that's given by this, right? Yeah, so is it enough to say u at u is equal to u0 at time 0? or? It depends on which sense. You are talking about your definition of uh, initial data. So usually, this is a global norm. But uh, for local solutions, for example, is that they converge in L2 in any compact uh, set. So it's a weaker. It's okay to be a weaker. And uh, for, for, for the theory of L3 weak, it's usually weak convergence is sufficient. But here, this is stronger. This is L2. Right. So, yeah, yeah. so you have the strong information. Right. But it's, it's self similar. Or DSS. Yeah. Yeah. So any other question? I have recovered my time, so. <laughs> I should slow down. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's an interesting scenario. So, so in only in this part three, this self construction, the solutions uh, could be singular. So, the previous two constructions, the solutions are all uh, all have a pointwise bound, but this solution could have a singularity. And suppose it, it is singular at a particular point x naught t naught. And then, then by, D, by DSS property, it's also singular at all this rescaled space time point. So it's from time zero to up to time infinity. And so we say that, uh, we say that UXT does not become regular for T sufficiently large. And uh, its object statement is called eventual regularity. So, so this says that it's possible for a solution to lose eventual regularity. So in contrast, there's a simple theorem saying the following. So any local Lorentz solution, any, it's any, it, we don't have any structure, but uh, we just need data to be in L3, R3, not L3 weak. Then this solution must has eventual regularity. So it's this borderline difference which allows uh, uh, the failure of uh, eventual regularity. So, so so uh, at, the, uh, at the beginning of my project, I was actually trying to prove the opposite. I want to show that uh, any local Lorentz solutions with your data in L3 weak has eventual regularity. And then I realized that it's not possible. <coughs> Schedule proof. So this, 
So, uh, so I, I need the local rate solutions, and so I need pressure. So it is usual the Leroy magnification, but I, I do this in the, the Leroy equation side. I do magnification here, and then I had to solve a periodic, time periodic solution from zero to type of t, and then this is uh, in the Galkin approximation, and so the the the, the equation has some uh, uh, damping, so the size of v at the type of t is based is less than some sigma less than one uh, theta less than one plus constant, and then one can use uh, broad this point to con construct a uh, periodic solution, and then take limit first in k, and then we, we still have epsilon back to physical variables to recover the pressure p epsilon and then take their limit. So here we could uh, call Slim, who is somewhere here. And, uh, but uh, there are many people to, uh, who, who did this, this kind of things. So that's what was part three. So I talked about all three constructions. So the part four is a new part, rotated versions. So here I, I need to fix my notation. Uh, notation. So I, my notations will be notation about the x three axis. So it's just these guys. And so these notations they come in with each other. So the derivative has a simple form. Uh, it's a JR or R equal to RJ. J is just this matrix. So this kind of solutions was first proposed by Grisha Perelman for backward solutions uh, a decade ago as a candidate for singularity. He, he, he asked, does this kind of solution exist in the critical space? But uh, they, 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 they both couldn't solve it. So, the, so I, here I managed to cite uh, Ivan. So I was working with him on linear shading equations at the time. So I have cited all three organizers of this workshop in this, in this uh, transparency. Is there a fourth one? No. Okay, very good. <laughs> so here's the definition. We say u is a rotated self-similar if for some alpha real number uxt is equal to this following this, this formula for every space point for any time and for any scaling factor lambda. So here, the new part is this rotation part outside and inside. And so you can see that first they have opposite sign here. And then they are both, uh, so it's, it's a number alpha times the log of this scaling, lamb, uh, scaling factor lambda. <coughs> so, uh, so, so, so maybe I should mention why log. So the choice that the angle theta of lambda is for alpha log lambda is natural because we, we want this to be true for every lambda. And so because of that, we need, we need the sum of theta, theta lambda plus theta mu has to be equal to theta of the product. So because then this uh, give us this formula here. And then uh, uh, rotating self-similar solutions is always discrete self-similar. Uh, just uh, choose any lambda such that alpha times log lambda is uh, two pi times the integer. <clears throat> and if alpha is zero, it is reduced to self similar. And then, so this is a formula here, rotate is self similar. So this formula works in for forward case, and also for positive case, uh, for backward case. So 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 now uh, for the forward case, we say lambda to be t to negative one half. Then this u uh, is given by this formula here now. So what it says is that, so this is time one. So it's the same as this picture. The value of u is determined by its value at the any fixed time, in particular at time one. And the now rotated discretely self-similar vector fields. So its definition is actually easier. So we need two numbers, lambda and theta. Uh, we require ust to be equal to this formula here. So this where r theta inside and r negative theta outside. And this is true for every xt, but only for one lambda. 
So there are some particular cases. Uh, if theta is uh, two pi times the integer, <coughs> or then r theta is just identity. So it's uh, it's a lambda DSS. Uh, if n theta is is two pi times the integer, then uh, u is DSS with factor lambda to power n, which just iterate this formula n times. To, to the, and then rotation part will, re, will return to identity. Uh, however, if theta over 2 pi is irrational, then u is not DSS. Uh, th in this case, I think it's, 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 it's cosine periodic in the, the Ray equation set. And so for any time positive, we can choose tau between 1 and lambda squared, which is uh, lambda to 2k times t. And then ust can be expressed by the value of u at time tau. So, so u is also decided by its values at the, the slice from 1 to lambda squared. So now the similarity transform. So first, uh, well, is u0 is the RDSS with respect to lambda and the phase theta. We, can we have to choose the alpha. And this alpha is not unique. We can choose any alpha. Uh, alpha k for any integer k just to be this guy. <coughs> and then we define the new variables. So this part, this part is the, the old one. But now we do a notation here, r, alpha s outside of v. And then in the inner variable, we do a, a inference rotation. C is the inference rotation of y. <coughs> and then the equation for original non-fixed law equations, u is equivalent to this new equation. So this, this part is there for the Ray equation, and this, part, this box part is coming, comes from the rotation. So one is from outside, one is from inside. So uh, at the beginning of my project, I, I choose z to be y, and, and I feel I saw that, that is a, that's a rotation, that's good enough. But, uh, it, but then the nonlinear terms does not change well. So, so this, 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 they have to be coupled. Otherwise, the near term is, is not preserved. And divergent free term is also not preserved. And this is actually quite uh, uh, natural. So I, I, I forgot to put that in the slides. The, the, I, the, the, solu uh, the study for rotating fluid, OK, the study for fluid with a rotating obstacle is, 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 a, is a very uh, well-studied object. So, Rotating obstacle in fluid. So if you do Google search, you will see uh, uh, several papers on, on this subject. And uh, there, I think they also have these two terms with different forms. But of course, they don't have these two terms coming from self similarity. So, so, so the new terms, uh, okay, they are new, but uh, they are divergence free, so by direct computation. And uh, the new term is orthogonal to V in L2 sense. And so it will have the same applied bound as the real equations. And then RSS U corresponds to stationary V, and RDSS U corresponds to periodic V. And then, so, so the proof itself is not very hard. So for, so for this theorem, so it's, it's similar. So for any L3 weak initial data U0 in the whole space or in half space, <coughs> if U0 is RSS, then there's a RSS solution. This is a typo, this is RSS. And U0 is RDSS, then there's a solution which is also RDSS. So the only thing I require for data is that it's L3 weak. So that, that's everything of my work. And so I just to give a two-page two slides on, on remark on backward case. So, so what, is, what I know is that uh, in the backward case, self similar solutions do not exist. If u is uh, L infinity in time, time here is a negative, uh, L3 weak. So this was done by my, my advisor and his advisor and uh, my academic uh, uncle in the L3 case. 
and then I did a case for NOC weak. And then uh, DSS solutions do not exist if UT is in L3, L infinity and L3 in space. So this is the celebrated work of Escariaza, Seracin, and Spheric. But then, uh, so the existence of DSS solutions in this class is not known. And so here I also mentioned that Schaeffer's example of singular factor fields, uh, DSS. So this, these are basically what are known. And then the second page, the open problems, problem two. So problem one was the existence of uh, periodic solutions in the for multi-connected uh, boundary. So problem two is this. So existence of discrete cell similar solutions satisfying this critical bound. And the special case of problem two is the problem of Grisha uh, Perelman. It said that the uh, existence of rotation, rotated cell similar solutions satisfying the same bound. I, I put question mark here because I didn't talk to him. So what I learned are some a few sentences from Seroki. So, so this is my case. And so, so here are my, a few remarks. So RSS solutions, uh, you, you can deal with a stationary solution equation. So that's is good. Uh, however, for this stationary solution, there's no, ma no maximum principle, unlike the case studied by uh, my, my family. So, so, so it's, uh, this is very hard. Finally, problem three is, uh, I, I think it's possible to improve Schaeffer's example from DSS to self-similar, but I don't know how to do it yet. Okay, and uh, that's the end. Thank you. I just wonder if we could go back to um, part one of your talk. You you mentioned that you needed um, these estimates on like U naught in L six and gradient U naught being in um, L two. L two, yes. And you and um, you you claim that you know it from the half space because that um um well you that, that yeah you, you know on the half space but you don't know it on the cone. So what what um. What are some difficulties when you're trying to show it on, say, certain types of cones, like, say, quarter space or...? Yeah, I thought about uh, a quarter space. Uh, however, theoretical estimate for green tensors is already very difficult in, in half space. It's, uh, and his estimate is not complete. His estimate is only for divergence-free initial data, which has zero normal component. But then, so that, that's, that, that does not apply to non-field store equations because the source term v dot greater than v will be on the right hand side and it's not diversion free. So, so even for half space, the available estimates are very limited and I don't know any estimate of this sort in, in quarter space. I know nothing about navi stokes equation, so that might be a, a stupid question. But at the beginning of your talk, you have mentioned that your DSS solution is uh, related to the for formation of black holes and some applications in cosmology, right? Yes. Uh, my question is, uh, I, I noticed that you are looking at incompressible fluid and yes. with viscosity, and uh, in an incompressible case, I think the speed of sonic, the sonic speed is, is infinite. Is this a uh, the conviction with the principle of general or special relativity? Uh, I think uh, self-similar solutions are... Is there, is there any some, some properties of finite speed propagation to, to, be, uh, uh, to be in the, in the region of, of, of general or special relativity? So, so you, you, your question about general relativity. So general relativity is in some sense time reversible. But uh, we have uh, self-similar objects in many time reversible systems, so. So, so, so that's my question. How it, uh, uh, the the relation of this? Uh, I say it's not really related to. So I mean the, dissip the dissipation, the 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 presence of dissipation is not the deciding factor for self-similar object. Uh, actually. Okay, it may have uh, less flexibility, but uh, uh, actually without dissipation, there's a bigger chance of self-similar object. That's my opinion. And 
And is there some uh, possibility to regard, for example, the compressible fluid? Uh, compressible fluid? Yes, yes, because co compressible fluid, in, in there you have finite speed uh, of sound. So. Well, I think gas dynamics is, comp is compressible, right? To relate your rotating and self-similar solution with this uh, problem, with the obstacle, the problem you have in the board, the obstacle problem of the obstacle. Uh, this one is different because uh, for rotating obstacles, they, they, they have a, the obstacle is rotating, so they, 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 they choose the coordinate fixed to the obstacle, so that the domain becomes the exterior domain right. and the fixed. So it was necessary for them and. Uh, and, uh, okay, so there is no direct relation. Right? No, okay. but the derivation of, of the equation would be, are, are the same. Mm, okay. okay, good. Okay, if no other questions, thanks again. Oh, thank you.